What's good? It's your boy CJ Goodfellow back with the Boxing Clinic one time for the one time. I'm um, doing a movie review on Netflix exclusive documentary called Counterpunch. And um, if you're not familiar, it's on Netflix. It just dropped um, the 16th, I believe. And it's a, a documentary following uh, three different levels of, of boxers. Um, the first being a prospect, amateur term prospect, Christopher Colbert, a little B hop. Um, most of you guys might know him. Then it's uh, following the amateur on his, uh, you know, his way to trying to qualify for the Olympics. Uh, Cam F. Awesome. Um, and the pro, Peter Quillen. Um, has, uh, you know, interviews in there with Oscar giving his two cents, Oscar De La Hoya, Bernard Hopkins, Sugar Ray Leonard, uh, Stevie Kim, ho ass. Um, and a couple other people. Clarissa Shield made an appearance as well with her two gold medals. Shout out to her. Love her. Um, but, you know, to start off, you know, you know, where should I start? We could start off with the uh, amateur. Uh, he changed his name to Cam F. Awesome. Uh, he was a heavyweight. He got beat by a guy from Philly at the Golden Gloves. You know, was really trying hard. You know, he had won the Golden Gloves six times, been there 12 years, never got fighter of the tournament the golden boy fighter of the tournament never got it um so you know he's been on a, a very you know hard push to make the olympics i think he missed it before or something like that um you know and he, he turned down going professional to pursue this dream to be olympian okay so um you know he lost to the dude from philadelphia um decided to come down from super heavyweight all the way down to you know regular heavyweight 201 pounds um you know, uh, came back stronger than ever, um, and it just followed him to his Olympic trial. He qualified for the Olympics, then he had to go to the Olympic qualifier. It didn't show that that far ahead, but he did fail. But you know, he was a very intriguing uh, guy. You know, very upbeat, very passionate about the sport, and um, you know, you know, at the documentary, he didn't qualify to the Olympics. Did he get past a qualifier or something like that? And he still decided not to turn pro and still wants to still, you know, compete for the next Olympics, which is probably in 2020. So, you know, that's his dream or whatever. Um, you know, and he gave analysts about, you know, it, it went on, you know, about his story about how they chose to take the headgear out of the Olympic trials. And uh, that's him, him right there. How they chose Cam F. Lawson, um take the headgear out of the Olympic trials and they had the, the prospect, little B-Hop, who turned down, you know, a chance to go qualify for the Olympics, you know, to um, turn professional. And, you know, they talked about Al Heyman. They talked about the effect that he had. They called him, like, the Wizard of Oz, the guy behind the scenes, moving all the puppets, getting guys paid. They talking about him not making the best fights. You know, yada, die, yada, die, yada, die. Same shit. They always talk about Al Heyman. So, you know, a little B-hop, you know, you know, passed up on a chance to, you know, go try to qualify for the Olympics. Um, signed a professional deal with Al Heyman, packed with Al Heyman. You know, they fought him making his pro debut, you know. And uh, had appearances by Erickson Lubin, junior middleweight, uh, who's the number one contender for the WBC middleweight champion in the world. I think he's like 20 years old, very young, to Jamal Cello's belt. And, you know, it, it just shows you the the mindset of an 18-year-old, which he was. You know, he wasn't. He was a, a crime. Uh, he was crime field. You know, he was. He said he was in, in and out of shelters, robbing, shooting, gambling, doing whatever. You know, doing whatever in the street. Pretty much paraphrasing there. And um, you know, boxing was a safe haven. You know, um, the little you know the boxing group they had was the last one of the last boxing gyms in, in New York, in the city. And that's him right there. And um, you know, he he rose out of you know Atlas for boxing. I forgot the name of it. I apologize. Um, the program he rolls out the gym as one of the best prospects and they really have their hopes hold a lot of people have their hopes on him and that gym to really rise above and potentially come back and give back and show kids what and show people and get grants to show people what can happen you know so he chose to sign a pack with Al Heyman you know pass up on the Olympics and uh, they, they was talking about how you know Oscar you know Sugar Ray Leonard Bernard Hopkins was talking about how that's the Mayweather effect how how kids don't value having a gold medal or competing for a gold medal anymore they want to make the money why sign the fight for a gold medal when you could drop a bugatti uh you know quicker you know you can go through the ropes right now 
and get your prospect stage and, and tomato can stage. They have Paul on there to talk about that as well. And get that out of the way in two or three years from four years, you can be, you know, where you want to be if everything goes right. In the Olympics, you know, why waste your time? You know, and I think, you know, this is my opinion here. A lot of kids don't want to fight for the Olympics because, you know, it is the money. But at the same time, they've seen so many other guys get fucked over in the Olympics by other countries. You know, why give a fuck? And then the program is, is not good as it used to be. They have, from what I hear, they have a bunch of, whole bunch of coaches that never was amateur fighters and never was professional fighters. So, you know, so basically it pretty much followed him, you know. And you could tell the, the mentality of the age. You know, he was he he dropped out of high school. Once again, he already dropped out before. And, you know, he was making money. They was making sure they managed his money, his manager, and uh, make sure they make sure he survived. But he was he got hired to fight in a professional camp. I forget the fighter's name. You know, he's a world I think he's a world champion or something like that. He was very decorated amateur and all that. And um you know, he's eating Burger King. He's treating the trip like a vacation. And Erickson Lubin, the junior middleweight champion, I mean, junior middleweight contender, almost about to be champion, um, was telling him, like, dude, you got to take this shit serious 24-7. He said, it's not a game. So, you know, Colbert, little B-Hop, was like, you know, this ain't serious to me. I'm not taking this serious. I'm treating this as a vacation. I'm getting paid just down here to spar him. You know, and he, Erickson Lubin was like, man, you, you ain't, you know, I'm paraphrasing, like, you, you, you being dumb right now. Take it serious. You know, and he got worked in, in, the, in the sparring. Almost didn't make it out the couple rounds he did, and I think that was a reality check for him that he has a lot of room to grow. So that was, you know, pretty much his part. And Peter Quillen part was basically the guy who was already with Hal Heyman, you know, dropped his belt, took a year off, had a draw, then got knocked out by Danny Jacobs, you know. They pretty much chronicled that stuff, his ups and downs in his career, his relationship with his father, and being able to make it out of the slums, be, being able to make it out of the streets, being homeless in New York, and, um, you know, it's funny, his father, his his friendship, his relationship with his father is funny, you know, like everybody. Their father think you're still a kid, but, you know, when you got the money, you're in control, you know, family saying they're not doing enough for you, you know, for them, but you're doing more for niggas in the streets, and that's what his family portray him as, and he was like, I mean, he has to understand that I'm the boss. But it, it, it you know, it really much showed his ups and downs in his career, you know, dropping his belt versus Korobov and Oscar De La Hoya, you know, the famous uh, little interview he had in the movie saying that I would never... You know, dropped my belt, but his star pupil, Canelo Alvarez, dropped his belt versus Triple G. You know, even though if that was co- recorded a couple years from now, you know, you're a hypocrite. You know, he's trying, they all trying to dog Peter Quillen for, you know, all the decisions he made with dropping his belt, then taking a year off to spend with his family. That's why he said he dropped his belt because he wanted his time. He just had a newborn. I believe his wife, you know, had a miscarriage before. They didn't think they would be able to have babies. And, you know, and it, you know, chronicled him, you know, ups and downs, drawing with Andy Lee. You know, losing the title to Danny Jacobs, winning the title from the damn. So it was a very good movie. I gave it a five out of ten. We gonna.